Great. Okay, welcome everyone to the penultimate session on for the DAO Build Guild for Zodiac and kind of composable DAO tooling. Um, this will be the last official KB4 session. Uh, we are going to host one next week in our Discord channel and the Zodiac Workshop channel that will tie together some more of the mods and show better ways to kind of cross, better ways for cross-chain tooling um, related to kind of like XDAO, Rinkaby, and Mainnet and connect some of the platforms we've made in the previous sessions. Um, but this is definitely in a certain way the culmination of the sessions because today we'll learn how to build our own Zodiac mod actually using um, a developer environment in the browser. And you'll get a sense of um, basically one, how easy it is to build a Zodiac mod and secondarily um, how much better the tooling has gotten uh, related to different types of kind of on-chain tooling. Um, but first a kind of brief overview again, for those of you who are new and also might just want to refresher on what Zodiac is and related to what we'll be building today. Uh, so we call Zodiac the expansion pack for DAOs. Um, it's a composable design philosophy for DAOs and a collection of tools built according to an open standard because DAOs are not monoliths, they're constellations. And Zodiac launched uh, mid-September with four different modules that are live and accessible um, through the Safe App Store. So if you have your Gnosis Safe and you go to the Apps tab, you'll see Zodiac at the bottom. And basically this opens up a screen for you where you can kind of equip different modules and different essentially functionalities for your DAO and cross-chain DAOs as well. And more than a collection of tools, um, Zodiac is ultimately an open standard on which anyone can build to ensure DAO interoperability. And each tool adheres to the open standard, which consists of kind of four rough categories. Um, so avatars, so this is kind of an asset vault or an account on Ethereum. Uh, you could say a Gnosis safe is an avatar. Uh, modules, so kind of that's what we'll be building today, just some sort of um, kind of smart contract code that performs a particular function um, and can be executed by avatars. Um, also modifiers, so kind of tooling that um, modifies how modules act <laughs> and guards, basically different types of security practices around functions that can be called by DAOs and whatever accounts are under the stack. Um, so the current Zodiac compliant collection of tools um, are soon to all be available through the Zodiac also encompass a few more that weren't mentioned before. So obviously Gnosis Safe, um, but also the Safe Minion, which was developed by Dow House, which allows Moloch DAOs to manage a Gnosis Safe. Um, there's also Usu, which was developed by Hyphal DAO and TokenWalk, which mm -hmm. allows avatars to cooperate with uh, trustless tokenized eGov, basically switching between different types of governance strategies. And also Scope, um, which is a guard that limits the functions that a safe or avatar can call. Um, and in addition to those, we have exit, delay, reality, and bridge, all of which we've gone over to some degree in previous sessions. And all of those modules can uh, basically combine different pathways for DAOs to evolve over time. So in this example, um, it could be phase one where you have a Gnosis safe and some multi-sig signers plus a snapshot voting space. Then you equip exit, which is like rage quit for Gnosis Safe, allowing anyone to redeem a governance token for assets in this Gnosis Safe. Then you move towards further decentralization where you equip reality, which basically allows off-chain snapchain, off chain snapshot votes to go on chain and then become executable by anyone in the community and execute transactions related to that Gnosis Safe independent of the signers. And then kind of a full decentralization is um, setting the Gnosis Safe uh, signers to one or zero out of one technically, and the scope, so limiting the functions the Gnosis Safe can call, and also allowing anyone in the community to make a proposal to the Gnosis Safe, and then anyone can uh, execute that transaction if it passes. Um, so this is just one way that uh, Zodiac enables organic pathways for progressive decentralization. Um, there are many others um, for DAOs to kind of guide the way in the dark forest in their adventure. And they're designed to take decision-making beyond token voting, looking to hybrid models using time delays and anti-collusion signaling methods. Um, and at its core, the open standard couples avatars or accounts from decision-making 
Um, so the kind of premise that you don't need your kind of asset vault of your DAO to dictate what types of decisions you can make and also what types of governance processes you use. Um, so governance, membership, and treasury management can be customized independently of any of the affordances of the tools that a DAO uses. In essence, um, Zodiac allows DAOs to evolve. Um, and most kind of DAO platforms think of them as kind of singular, specific decision-making styles um, that a DAO uses. But by using a kind of Zodiac account at its core and then equipping different mods over time, uh, DAOs can change their governance processes and evolve like uh, natural organizations do. Because I think all of us have, have been experimented in DAOs, we know that they change over time and uh, we know that the space is still early. Um, and basically, Gnosis Guild, so myself and uh, colleagues who have joined other calls, Mora and Sam, Nathan, et cetera, uh, we're basically a keeper of the Zodiac Open Standard and a kind of initiator of it. However, um, anyone can contribute to the collection of tools by submitting a pull request on the repo, just at Gnosis slash Zodiac on GitHub. And um, we are working to kind of figure out a way to basically decentralize the governance of the repo as well as um, any value that the Zodiac tool suite produces um, for it to be collectively and decentrally managed and um, also go back to the communities who contribute. Um, so that's it for the kind of brief refresher to Zodiac. Um, today's session, as I mentioned before, will basically be building a Zodiac mod. So you'll see a little bit more under the hood um, of how what Zodiac mods actually are. Um, and you can follow along. Uh, I'll basically just throw it in a Zoom chat here. Um, we put together a tutorial specifically for this. And I'll follow kind of super, super closely with the tutorial going back and forth. And basically just if you want to follow along or maybe watch and then uh, <laughs> reference this video later, that's also very, um, very possible. I just had the Zoom controls. Um, and we can get started. Oops. There we go. Cool. Um, so basically for this tutorial, we'll make use of Remix, which is um, a kind of developer environment in browser uh, for Ethereum applications. Um, you can use a different ID if you'd like, or, um, but basically this tutorial can happen anywhere you'd like. Um, so Remix is super cool. I really love it. Um, and we also used it in a previous session um, when we were um, minting uh, tokens on Rinkby and XDAI. Um, so basically it allows you to kind of write and compile Solidity code and also deploy it on chain in different test environments. Um, so we can start by just simply importing a gist. Um, so basically gist are just kind of complete code from um, that can be stored on GitHub. And, uh, and basically when you come to the Solidity, uh, when you come to the Remix session, um, you can basically just choose to import from GIST, GIST um, and see it's on the kind of main page here. And so basically you can start working from existing kind of code template. And what you wanna do is just uh, from the tutorial, you want to copy, you open the GIST, copy the URL and put it over. So here, um, this means we should start with three kind of boilerplate Solidity files, button, uh, mock safe, and my module. And basically this tutorial today will be super exciting. We're gonna build a button that our safe can particularly push and also a module that basically makes a button that is pushable by the safe. And while this is um, a little bit kind of paperclip maximizer where you're pushing the button and pushing it again as the kind of teleology of the session, um, it is super expandable in the sense that you can now link in future sessions, if you'd like, um, anything to the other side of that button. And you'll see how that's basically logic of interacting with dApps at large as well. Um, so going back to the tutorial, we have our kind of setup just file. Um, and we go down. And so it's added the three files mentioned, uh, button, mock safe, and soul, um, mock safe and my module. And you can also copy them manually if you'd like. Um, and so just an overview that button is a little contract with one function, basically push button, which increments a counter. 
Um, so every time, once we deploy it, you push the button, uh, the pushes counter goes up by one. Um, also, there's the mock safe. Um, what this contract essentially does is basically it's a mock of the Gnosis safe that you can use in your local test environment. Um, and later we'll replace it with a real Gnosis safe on a public Rinkeby test network uh, to make sure all of our code really works. And then the my module file is basically where we'll be doing the kind of custom contract um, to control our Gnosis safe and make it push the button um, from the other file. Um, so before we start kind of writing our module specifically, um, we should deploy our button and mock safe contracts to our local environment so that we can interact and kind of call function from them. So what you want to do is navigate to the Solidity Compiler tab and check Auto Compile. This will recompile your contract every time you make a change. So if we go over here, um, I think it's worth noting. So in Remix, there's these buttons here. I often get them like a little bit confused. You just uh, you get used to it after a while, but you can always click around and see. So we have our general kind of file explorer where we can see the code. We have a Solidity compiler with a few different options. We have deploy and run transactions, the environment, the account, the owner. We'll get into that later. And also cool plugins that we can add to our environment. So going back to the Solidity compiler, um, as I mentioned before, we want to check auto compile here. So this basically means that every time we update the file, we'll auto auto compile the code and then we can deploy it as is. <clears throat> so here we've done that. And basically with um, the button solidity file, uh, we can then go to the deploy and run transactions tab and click button from the contracts drop down. So here we'll see our button. And then um, you can basically hit deploy directly. So we'll see the button here. And this, um, to note, this will be our local environment, this is the account. Um, cool. And then we see um, it's super subtle, but then you kind of see at the bottom here, uh, you now have button deployed at a particular contract address. And now we're going to do the same for our mock safe file. So you want to just kind of come up here and also click mock safe. And then you can see it's compiled auto. And you can see now um, you're available to deploy the mock safe. And once again, super subtle, but you can see it kind of appear below here. Cool. Um, so you now have these two in the settles place below um, button and mock safe where the contracts have been deployed. And um, when you click the carrot to their left, basically you can see more drop down information of um, different things you can now do with these deployed contracts. <clears throat> so um, you can test uh, basically some of the functions that you can call from these deployed contracts now. Um, and we can test uh, kind of a few different things. So basically, if you go to the button one, um, it's kind of nice because uh, Remix, which is the developer environment we're using in browser here, um, basically makes visual cues that you can then use um, to basically be able to test what the deployed code does. Um, and you have below here, basically a little kind of console output. If um, you're familiar with command line or otherwise, so kind of input feedback from uh, functions you call. And so basically, if we go to pushes here, uh, this should be the counter that um, says how many pushes have happened so far. So if we look at it, it outputs zero. Um, so when we check zero there, but then if we push the button, we push the button, and now, now we do pushes again, we drop it down. Um, we see that pushes have become one. <laughs> um, so basically, it's just something that you push a button and it keeps track of how many times the button has been pushed so you can tell that it's working. <clears throat> and then basically what we want to do now is um, uh, transfer the ownership of this button. So the kind of entity that can um, own and kind of uh, push the button uh, to our mock safe. So to our Gnosis safe that's been deployed in our local environment. Um, so 
we want to go to the transfer ownership function. Um, but first, if we go basically to the mock safe here, um, it will give you a contract address that has been deployed at. So if you click the copy button, that will just give you the address. And then if you go to button, transfer ownership, which is a function that's in the code itself. Um, so if we look here. Um, so basically, here we go. And go down. And um, so I just copy paste it and put the mock safe here. I say transact. I should have just transferred the ownership of the button uh, to our mock safe. So now trying the push button on the button script will fail. So we go back, <laughs> push button. No, we get an error message. It's because um, now there's actually a different owner that has the rights to push the button. Uh, so then you expand the mock safe and call the Z function um, with the following parameters. Um, and basically, this will allow you to be able to actually execute uh, the button. Push. <laughs> um, so here we go, the button contract address, and we go over to mock safe, and we say execute. So if we use the caret, then the kind of different variables that we'll be passing in or parameters we'll be passing in um, to the function right here. And we say two, this is the address of the button. And then you put value zero because now um, value is being transferred. And basically, yeah. Um, and then we pass the ABI encoded function signature for the push button function. Now do transact. Oops, sorry, this is actually, this is the wrong function, I'm sorry. So important to read the different buttons. So this is, um, we wanted to execute instead of um, enable module. Uh, Kia, no, you're on the right one. It's just when you expand yeah. it. Yeah. All right. Uh, it changes. Thanks. So it's exactly the one you want, yeah. And yeah. I think you just need to wrap uh, the data in uh, quotes. Cool, thanks. <laughs> cool, and that should be all good. Cool, and then, yes, the exact function has passed. Um, so basically, if we now push the button on the button contract, um, it should be able to increment again. So we can try it. Hmm. Th this is correct. So it should fail now because you've transferred ownership. Right. So you don't, you no longer have the rights to push the button. Uh, but if you hit the pushes button, uh, you'll see the current uh, is currently at two, and then if you if you hit that uh, exec button over on your mock module to exec that transaction, then that one should go. And now, if you hit pushes again, you'll see that it's incremented to three. So this is your mock safe pushing the button. Well, <laughs> well thanks. All right. Um, so we pushed the button, and we've made the safe push the button. Um, I was going to pause just for a moment and see if there's any just general questions about the setup. Um, and because now that we've got set up, we can look more towards actually building a module. But pause for a second. Cool. Um, so basically, now we'll get into the kind of my module, uh, Solidity 5. So, what is a module? Um, by default, Gnosis Safe operates as a multi sig wallet requiring confirmation from a certain amount of signers in order to execute transactions. However, in addition to um, using the multi-sig logic, you can enable modules on your Gnosis safe. Basically, there are contract addresses that are allowed to bypass the normal multi-sig logic by calling some special function, either exec transaction from module or exec transaction from module return data. Basically, what this allows is the safe to execute transactions from the module. 
So earlier we deployed and set up a mock safe and button that can only be pushed by the mock safe. Um, but now we'll create a module that can trigger the mock safe to push the button. <laughs> so um, basically in any module that's built in Zodiac, you want to import um, that's Zodiac compatible, let's say, you want to import the nurses um, PM file um, and kind of library and the contract module.sol. Um, so because Zodiac is a philosophy we're building composable DAO tooling, um, we've built a library of tools that you can import um, to help ensure your modules are Zodiac compatible and to reduce the amount of time and effort for you to implement your module. So you do simply the implementation here. So if we look over back at our now um, my module, um, we see that actually from the gist that we've imported um, that um, imported library is actually already in the code. So we don't need to do anything, but just to let you know that if you're building the Zodiac mod, you always want to import this one. <clears throat> so um, what we'll do is first start with um, defining some variables or um, kind of making namespaces for variables and an initial function to push the button. Um, so which we'll uh, call the exec function from the module. Uh, um, so exec will call exec transaction from module function on the connected safe. Um, basically, it has four parameters. Um, uh, so two, the address that the safe will call, um, which is the button contract in our case, value, um, the amount of ETH and why that should be sent with the transaction. Uh, this is zero in our case. Um, and data. So this is the ABI encoded transaction data that the data for the safe's transaction. In our case, this is the function selector for the push button function. And operation defines whether the transaction should be a call or delegate call. In our case, we'll just do a call. Um, so basically, if you want, you can just kind of copy over this code and put it in your um, kind of my module uh, contract. So contract my module is module. Here, if we copy paste this code and just indent it. Um, so basically, as mentioned, we've basically created an address uh, namespace variable for, for a button. It's public, accessible by the whole contract, and a function to push the button. Um, and with the four variables, so we're passing in button. Um, or with the four parameters, we're passing in button variable, uh, zero for the data and value, the ABI um, encoded function, and just a normal call rather than a delegate call. Um, so basically, um, that's the overall kind of skeleton framework for the module, but the bulk of our work will be in creating a module defining the conditions under which exec can be called. However, um, there will be compiler errors, if you see, kind of dropping down here in the red flags, because we've set it to auto compile, it will automatically see the error. Um, so basically, um, Module.soil provides another convenience feature to enable any module to be compatible with our module proxy factory in the Zodiac Safe app, which makes it easier to streamline deployment and setup of modules. So for example, we can do things like batch deployment of safe, its modules, and the calls to enable modules into one Ethereum transaction. So super functionality packed into one reference. Um, and before a contract will compile, we'll need to add a constructor and setup function. The constructor is a function that is automatically called only once when a contract is deployed and usually to initialize the contract. So you can notice here, um, and we'll see below, that our constructor simply ABI encodes the parameters that were passed in and then calls the setup function. Uh, this gives users the option to deploy the module directly or to deploy it using the module proxy factory. Um, so I won't go too much into detail about this last distinction, uh, but we can dive into kind of what the constructor and setup looks like. So if we copy over this code, we also want to include it into our um, general setup. And basically our setup function here, um, before we kind of go up, um, we'll set the button address and then the avatar target and owner addresses. Um, and, and we'll talk a little bit about what those are after we kind of put it in. So if we go down. So we have our constructor um, that just basically will initialize the contract and set up kind of passing the avatars and addresses. 
So we want to pass these addresses as kind of like owners of different aspects of the contract. And in this case, they'll all be the same. Um, but what function they serve is that the avatar is um, ultimately the address that will execute the transaction that is passed by the module. In this case, it's our safe. Um, and the target is the address that this module will call um, from. So in most cases, this would be the safe or the safe that you're using and setting up the mod on. But in some cases, it could be a special kind of module called a modifier that sits between a module and an avatar and modifies it. Um, and also the owner. So this is the address that has permissions to call only owner functions on the module. So kind of admin permissions. And so after adding in this code, um, we should see no longer any kind of compiler issues and we should be able to um, and keep going. So pausing briefly, if there's any questions. So um, moving on to basically deploying our module now. Um, so now that it's compiling, it's time to deploy it on our local test environment. Um, so you can use the address of your previously deployed mock safe as the owner parameter and the address of your previously deployed button for the button parameter. And once it's deployed, you can expand it to your push button function along with a handful of other functions and variables imported. <clears throat> So basically, if we go back and we're at the module code and we want to um, look at different deployments, um, basically here we can come to my module. And before we deploy it, as wasn't the case with the previous contracts that we're deploying on chain to our test environment, um, it has some uh, parameters that we'll have to pass. Um, so going back, we want to basically get the owner, which is our mock safe address. and also the button address. So these will be kind of on-chain reference to um, what will be passed through the deployed contract. We choose transact. Cool. And then we see, once again, settle at the very bottom, my module has been deployed at a specific contract address. So basically, once it's deployed, you can expand it to see a push button function along with a handful of other functions and variables imported. So if we go down and open the carrot, now we see from our module, um, there's a bunch of different uh, like uh, sort of parameters we can reset. Um, so, so it's a kind of note um, that safes must explicitly enable addresses as modules to give them access um, to the function that modules can call. Uh, so before your push button function will work, you'll need to enable your module on your safe by calling the enable module function. Um, so um, yeah, just a small note here that also a real Gnosis safe can have multiple modules enabled at once, but our mock safe can only have one in case you were trying to play around. Um, so basically here we'll have to go back to our mock safe and call the enable module function. So if we go back to mock safe and we get our module contract, and then, um, so we wanna also copy the contract address of my module that we've just deployed and then go back to mock safe and go to enable module and basically enter that contract address yeah. and click transact. You'll click the button next to uh, enable module. Uh, that is that, that it's not not immediately yeah. It's not immediately obvious that uh, the actual label, like where it says uh, exec, or where when you have the carrot uh, in the minimized mode, that the label is actually clickable. Yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of strange how basically that it loses its uh, framing once you drop it down. <laughs> yeah. So like where it says enable module right now, if you click that rather than expanding it. Um, so uh, contract that element again, basically, mm -hmm. uh, like hit, hit the carrot and then just hit enable module rather than expanding it out. And that's actually clickable. Uh, and that's not immediately obvious, I think. Yeah, that isn't. Thank you. Let me just make sure I still had the right thing copied in. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Cool. And we've enabled the module. So if we go back to my module, uh, we should basically be able to push the button. Great. 
So basically, uh, <laughs> uh, we've essentially just given um, the safe uh, kind of enabled that module on the safe to be executed by the safe and call the function that modules can call. <clears> okay, <throat> um, so basically, um, we've just done this all in a kind of local test environment. Um, and what is on the other side of this button is yet to be known. Um, but before we kind of deploy to a public test environment, specifically Rinkeby Network, I wanted to pause again for any questions. Cool. Kia, can you talk just a little bit about the proxy pattern and uh, what kinds of things that might enable instead of just deploying your own module? Sure. Uh, Oren, do you want to maybe say more on a technical level about the proxy factory and delegate calls? Yeah. Uh, so what that does primarily is just make it um, easier and cheaper to deploy. So we essentially have this proxy factory that lets you spin up uh, a, a, a copy of an existing contract as opposed to having to deploy the entire contract yourself. So it reduces your deployment costs uh, at the cost of a, a slight increase in the kind of per transaction cost, uh, per call cost to that uh, that module. Um, so slightly uh, significantly reduced uh, deployment cost is one benefit. But then the other benefit is that it enables us to very easily have uh, things like deterministic addresses so that we can know in advance what the address of the module is going to be. And because we can do that, we can basically batch together a whole bunch of transaction uh, transactions and into one Ethereum transaction. So you can do things like uh, deploy a safe, uh, deploy a module, enable the module, and then call some function on the module all batched into one transaction, uh, which uh, is all kind of enabled by this by the fact that we have this kind of proxy factory set up and these deterministic addresses uh, enabled. So basically, it just it's a it's a convenience feature that allows you to to uh, make much nicer user experiences. Thanks. Any and, questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's really, really awesome. Uh, have you thought at all? I, I have two different questions. The one is, um, are you looking at all in terms of like who is deploying what kinds of modules onto the chain and using those to like build up a repository of uh, possibilities with the Zodiac mods? And for Oren, uh, is there a way that you know we could build a mod to uh, make sure that any Gnosis safe transaction makes use of flashbots? Uh, so not only can we batch our transactions together using the proxy pattern and delegate calls, but also like make sure that they make use of uh, of flashbots and those bundled transactions. Have you thought about that? Well, I'll take one. Uh, so yeah, right now, the kind of mechanism by which modules uh, will be added to the Zodiac app is basically by submitting a PR to the repo. Um, and that's the Gnosis slash Zodiac one. But essentially what the Zodiac app is on the Gnosis safe is a module manager. So technically any kind of compatible modules um, could be freely displayed there or in some way automatically compatible, as long as it's built um, with the specific functions that a module can call and also imports the module solidity file. Um, so if people are interested in building them and kind of unsure about like how to deploy or how to get in touch, uh, feel free to just chat us. The other uh, constraint there is the source code needs to be verified uh, on, on Etherscan or kind of uh, source file or something like that so that the um, Zodiac app can actually fetch that source code and then kind of expose the ABI. Um, and then, yeah, the, the other side of that, a, a module that uh, makes use of Flashbots, I think that's a, an interesting concept, but if I understand Flashbots correctly, it's, it's uh, really like the layer before things make it on chain, right? So Flashbots uh, essentially has this uh, alternate RPC node that you can use that won't broadcast your transactions to the world before they get uh, like it, it won't put the transactions essentially into a public mempool before putting them into a block, uh, and so you you eliminate uh, or you drastically reduce the possibility of of your tr transactions being front run because uh, they they haven't been broadcast to the world. Um, 
So I don't know uh, if there would be a meaningful way to utilize that within the context of a smart contract unless there is, I don't know, maybe maybe you build a um, maybe you build a module that only allows specific only allows like transactions to be executed if a specific person mines a block or a specific address mines a block. Something like that, I, I think, would be possible. Uh, but it's not something I've thought about uh, prior to, to now. So this is definitely off the cuff. Yeah, I, I know that there's also been um, discussion of like, could you have a zero knowledge layer on all transactions from a safe? And yeah, we'll, we'll see. And in terms of just MEV protection, also have to shout out CalSwap, um, which is now compatible you can use the safe with. So. <laughs> Um, but cool, jumping back in, um, basically, so we've created uh, the button module um, on our local environment, um, and now we can actually deploy it to a public testnet. Um, so what you can do here is that you can either deploy safe or you can use an existing one. Um, so I'll go here and just um, see, I should open up. I think this is a Rinkeby one from a previous session that we've, uh, we've done. Um, Cool. So this was a DAO test safe. We can go to the um, DAO safe on Rinkeby. Um, so basically, from here, we have our safe already created. And then we'll have to deploy our button and module um, on Rinkeby before connecting it to the safe. Um, so basically, to to kind of take the code that we've written and actually deploy it on a public testnet, we want to go back to kind of the deploy function in, um, in uh, Remix. And first, uh, we'll deploy the button. And um, but we want to, well, first, we'll deploy the safe. And then um, we'll, well, first, we'll deploy the button and use the Rinkeby safe address as the owner. Um, so you should make sure that you have button open, um, or it won't show up in the deploy and run transactions tab. So if we have button open here, um, basically, we come and uh, to deploy it newly. Um, but first, we want to change our environment. So this is our kind of local test environment. Instead, we want to do injected Web3. And what this does is basically allows you to connect through MetaMask or other provider, and it will just prompt you um, if you're not logged in already. Uh, but we can see here, since I've logged in via MetaMask and the Rinkeby network to open up our safe, um, that it shows now Rinkeby with the test network ID4 um, that we're logged in there. And you definitely want to make sure you're on Rinkeby rather than um, another network that could um, not be a test environment. Um, and basically, we want to come down and deploy. Uh, so here we want to deploy the button. Um, but we want to make sure that the owner is the safe. Um, one quick question here, of because uh, there's no variables for the deployment. Can I just deploy without? Um, Cool, I'll just try it. I, yeah, I don't think that you should need uh, variables for the button. Perhaps when you deploy it, there'll be parameters. Um, so now we have uh, the button deployed on Rinkeby Test Network. It opens here. And um, here we can transfer ownership to the safe that we're using. Um, so if we get the safe address, come back over and transfer ownership. And it will prompt a transaction. And now we want to um, basically deploy a module with both our safe address and with the deployed bring me button address. So the transfer ownership went through for the button and it's coming back. We're going to open 
Get my module. And for the parameters we want to, I always try to be careful and make sure I've copy pasted the address like one or two steps in between. We take our button contract address. And we can simply deploy. Cool. Um, and so basically, while that is deploying, um, we can go back to our Nessus safe and then um, we can super excitedly add a custom module. So um, even if a kind of, uh, you know, a Zodiac compatible app um, is not yet uh, shown in the Zodiac interface, you can always come over to the app store and basically through here, as long as it's compatible, um, you can come to the Zodiac app. And so kind of the four familiar modules from previous sessions, but there's always custom modules. Seems like we might have lost Kia for a moment. Yeah, seems that way. But asked the same thing. <laughs> I was wondering if it was just me. I've been having my computer crash the whole day. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was sitting there going, is it me or is it, uh, is it Kia? Because I, I, during the cost of this, I already had to restart my machine twice because Zoom on Linux is really not fun. Uh, so crazy. I don't know that you want to fight. Yeah, it's such a pain. Anyway, okay, we do. Um, we'll wait patiently and see if she makes it back in. Yeah, yeah. We'll give her a few minutes. If she you doesn't, any... then I can uh, I can ad hoc jump in and uh, and try to finish off the rest of the session. It looks like she's back. Uh huh. She's back. Kia, we missed you desperately. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Um, so my laptop actually just like crashed without warning. <laughs> oh no. It happened for the first time. Zoom. It happened again now. Um, so what was the last thing you guys saw? Was I adding the contract address? <laughs> you were about to add the custom module. Okay, great. Here, let me, um, let me uh, pull it up again and then I'll share my screen. <laughs> so this is uh, probably going to throw some spanners in the works because your the list of like deployed instances of the contract in uh, Remix is going to have disappeared. So you'll either want to I'll deploy new deploy instances, them. yeah, of your button and your module, uh, or else, uh, <laughs> or else we need to dive through MetaMask. Did you verify the previous one yet? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, okay. But, cool. But yeah, yeah redeploying is probably easier. Yeah, yeah. I'll uh, I'll jump through and do it quickly. I'm just opening everything up. <laughs> I was just saying to Andy, I've rebooted my machine twice already during the call because Zoom's been fighting with my machine. Uh, yeah. So not entirely unexpected. Yeah, my laptop, well, it shouldn't be considered old, um, but it's five years old, which unfortunately is somewhat old. Um, so yeah, just in the last couple of days, it's been really uh, malfunctioning. Uh, but without warning, I think it just gets kind of memory crashes. <laughs> okay. All right. Mercury isn't even in retrograde. Uh, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's just that time, you know. <laughs> uh, it's the eclipse, as we said before. <laughs> it's the eclipse. It's definitely the eclipse. Damn evil moon. <laughs> well, so, all right, backlogged in, all set up, um, and. 
basically i just have to hop back on over to discord where i'm also streaming <laughs> share my screen and then i'll share it here um, it's nice we've been having a, a handful of people join oh actually wow it's a decent amount of people um join the other sessions hello i'm back um sorry i had a computer crash um but we'll pick up where we left off <laughs> um just one second okay there we go there we go cool i'm sharing my screen on zoom All right, and can y'all see um, on Zoom Remix? Yes. Cool. And okay. now on Discord. Great. <laughs> and we're back. Um, so yeah, basically, cool. I'm uh, I'm going to speed run deploying these contracts again on Rinkby. Um, so if we come back to our little, I want to deploy the button. There we go. Let me just hide my Zoom controls. <clears throat> and then we'll take the, the safe. <laughs> and we want to go back over. safe and then we get our button address and we're on rinkby we're gonna transact i always wonder if they'll get like a different verb for for this eventually other than transact um i mean they're technically transactions but there's something a bit bleak <clears throat> okay and so while that's deploying we'll go back over to the zodiac app Well, didn't lose us too much time. And now we're coming back uh, to the custom module. So basically here is, um, we've done all that. Um, so um, here, here we'll, we'll do it and see what happens. Uh, so we have our deployed module, and then we come over um, to the Zodiac app, and we'll say custom module, and we'll put the module address, and we say add module, and it will prompt a kind of safe transaction. And the key thing to remember is that um, adding modules actually uh, doesn't conform. Um, <clears throat> uh, basically, it doesn't conform to uh, what would be your standard multi-sig uh, permissions. Instead, it um, can be executed outside of them. So it's not like four out of six. It's just one out of one. So very important to be careful. <clears throat> Cool. So uh, we, we deployed the contract address. It's here. Um, but then it doesn't show up like uh, we have a deployed exit module, and we can see all of these things that we can do with it. But in our custom one, there's no read or write functions available. Why? And then it's because, um, kind of as Oren mentioned before, the source code has to be verified. So how do we do this to interact with it through the safe app? We can um, verify an ether scan to fix this. And I was having some error messages with this this week, so I will <laughs> head back over to the tutorial. Um, so basically, you want to open up the ether scan, um, and then you want to navigate to the code tab and select uh, verify and publish. And you enter your module's address. So we'll come back over. Solidity single file. And the compiler version. So if you go to Remix and um, you go back to your compiler, you can then see it's a uh, 0.8.7. Um, and for right now, we'll just go with uh, no license for the button.
So, um, and then you go to remix <laughs> and basically, cool. And you can activate the flattener plugin. So, and then you'll select my module. And basically go back over here and you can um, choose to, oops. It's the little uh, scroll icon in the left-hand sidebar. Uh, I see, thanks. Oops. No worries. And then we wanna go over to my module. Uh, why is it prompting me to flatten the gist and not the Solidity file? Is that an issue or is it just reading them all as the same thing? That's just how it's naming it. It's a little bit confusing. So it's not flattening the whole gist. You can see at the end of that ah, big chunky string, it says my module. Cool. <laughs> okay. So here it just, it should copy it to my clipboard. I think if I click that, you can come back and enter the contract code. Great. And so make sure um, your optimization settings match what you have in the Slivy file, and then pr uh, press verify and publish. So if all goes well, we'll hopefully see a success screen on Remix. And if we refresh the Zodiac app, we should see more details. Let's try it. <clears throat> so I don't think we have optimization here. And then going down. And it guesses the constructor arguments and we'll verify capture. And fingers crossed. Watching through this has been really helpful for me catching a couple of uh, typos. In the, uh, <laughs> in the tutorial, so I'm, I'm putting out PRs live as we do this. None of them are uh, mission critical though. Yay, <laughs> and it worked. So now if we go back to our safe and refresh, Oh, the release key again. Yes, it does seem that way. Oh. It's okay. You know, at moment critique, it had to happen. Uh, <laughs> so good. Uh, should, yeah, no worries. Back. Let's, um, yeah, I should be back with this in a minute. I can share my screen. Any questions? questions? Hello. Please do share Please your do screen. Share. Yeah, let me just give you. Yeah, you should be able to share your screen now. Awesome. Okay. Um, that's the result of what I was following. So I think even though Kay uh, disconnected, um, her explanation was good enough for us to follow and I can see all the read and write uh, interactions here so I can see the push button and that's my uh, uh, where is this <clears throat> uh, compiled and verified contract code of the my module hey, everyone. Uh, back with this short so, <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, Kay. Uh, I was following you and uh, I mean, your instructions and uh, just showing that it worked for me. Um, so I have all this stuff ready now. So, yeah.
Thank you. So now uh, you can continue to continue. push the button. Yeah, I suppose. Do whatever needs to be done. Right. Maybe even write Maybe a song about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll stop sharing. It, it looks awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much for sharing. <laughs> Sorry, my no, laptop no. crashed again right after like being like, yes, my module. <laughs> um, but hopefully that was enough for you guys to follow. <laughs> it was, it was indeed awesome. Has yeah. Proved it. Um, yeah, so I think it's, it's maybe, um, I was gonna then uh, kind of wrap up and potentially follow through on the snapshot safe snap plugin. But I think my I need to do some laptop diagnos diagnostics before uh, attempting any other tutorial again. Um, but yeah, it's awesome to see that you got it set up. And uh, I don't know if also while it crashed, there was any more general questions or specific questions related to the tutorial before wrapping up. I think the last part there is just talk actually pushing the button. Um, so Artem, maybe if you want to do it, if you go back to your remix, then you can uh, you can push the button, button in remix, and you should be able to see it uh, see a transaction show up in your safe. Okay, let me uh, share it again then, so I'm um, sure I'm doing correct action. Yeah. And your uh, uh, guidance. So I'll be like your 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 hands. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay. So now if you jump so back under remix, remix. I'm getting weak. I'm getting weak myself. And uh, you want me to push the button, yeah? Yeah. So just go to your deploy uh, my module. Uh, my module. Yeah. Push button. Okay. That should pop up MetaMask. If it didn't, you may need to just open MetaMask. Okay, but I think it might be thinking. Oh, uh, oops. I don't know why it's. If you want to uh, stop screen sharing while you do your password, no, it's fine. And that's fine. You're not going to see anything anyway. Let me try again. Because it was working perfectly fine. I was doing the same actions just now. Maybe it has to do with the sharing. Yeah, it's strange. Uh, so if you pop MetaMask open now, what happens? Well, when I was deploying, it was popping up, and then I was deploying the actual uh, edit and the custom model was popping up, and now it's not popping up. I don't know why. Let me, let me stop sharing and try it again, just in case it has to do with the, Alrighty. the Zoom. Zoom strikes again. Can I just say that one of my favorite parts of this whole week is watching Aaron yeah on a ball asking Artem to push a button. The <laughs> whole week has been complete for me by this interaction. So thank you so much. <laughs> um, and then the, the I, problem uh, that um, we transferred ownership to the Gnosis safe, maybe you can't actually do it here because that's not the owner or you should be able to do it from here. You should still be able to do it because it's a uh, it's a public function. Okay. Well, I'm having the same result. Just, just pending. So the injected just the rejected 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 rejected. Rejected. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is uh, the same way it was. But on the uh, on the Zodia on the does it safe? I can see like my module and everything, all the functions. Can I actually execute the push button from the Zodiac? The push button. Uh, yes, you can execute yeah, it from there, or you can also execute it from, from uh, Etherscan. Uh, 
Maybe that, maybe that would be a better demonstration, actually, if you, if you follow the link out to Etherscan from, from, uh, from the Zodiac app, and then, and then you can hit right contract and then I press the push button, push button there. there. Okay. Let me go to the... Uh, so in so compiler output, output there should, should be a link to the contract. To the contract. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just hit the, the contract address. Address. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And then and there's a right tab right at the top. At the top. Uh, uh, right underneath the, the contracts tab. Sorry. Contract tab. Sorry. Okay. So you'll hit right there. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're down to the last few real believers. <laughs> uh, if you, Atom, can you hear me? I can't hear him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Atom. Thank you so much. Thank you for playing. Goodbye. <laughs> Um, I might, I might just, uh, am I, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. I yeah. might just, just while, um, while, while we all have our last moment together before everything crashes again. Um, I know what's happening. I just hear a lot of muffled, um, uh, kind of screechy frozen voices, but I'll, I'll just um, say a really warm uh, thank you. If you mute Artem, then you should be good. If you mute Artem, then you should be good. It looks like Artem's back. Maybe, maybe not. I can't meet him because I'm not host. Um, but yeah, I think I just wanted to say like, we're, while we're all still <laughs> together here before any other technical calamity happens, um, just that it was really nice sharing these sessions with you all. And I really appreciate um, everybody who's seen it through to the last. Um, it's been super cool to see uh, confirmations in the chat that a bunch of people got the module working. Um, obviously, feel free to ping us either on Slack or on our Discord if you have any more questions. Um, so this is the this is the penultimate in all the Zodiac sessions, but this will be the last one hosted kind of officially through Kernel because I know your um, your what is uh, this this block of fellows is wrapping up. Um, but we'll do one actually same place um, or same time, different place, just in our Discord channel next week to tie together all of the loose ends. Um, and also I'll share the snapshot transaction I was going to do live at the end of the session, um, but it will basically be an open safe snap Zodiac reality mod vote to transfer tokens to either DAO. And um, yeah, for any of those like still interested in kind of staying in touch and working together, I think it would be super fun to, <laughs> to um, yeah, find also some use for XDAI um, Leo tokens and the DAOs like I would love to see about kind of um, doing further Zodiac development uh, through this or um, the forthcoming uh, Gnosis Guild grants program that there will be a Gnosis DAO proposal for quite soon.
Awesome. Kia, sorry, uh, so I pressed the uh, share button a little bit too soon. No, no, I, no problem. Uh, <laughs> I, I figured just to, to help uh, get us some closure on this, uh, I'd jump in and try to do it. Hopefully, I won't run into any uh, technical issues. This is one I set up uh, yesterday. Uh, so here's one I, I guess I baked earlier. Uh, but I'll hit um, contract, uh, hit the right tab, and then here we should see our uh, push button. And so I'm going to connect to Web3. And I'm going to run into similar issues to uh, Atom. Uh, <laughs> not have my better mask logged in. So just bear with me. All right, so we'll hit push button. Uh, there's no parameters, so I'm just going to hit right here. Uh, it'll pop up MetaMask once again. Is this some kind of mental circle? <laughs> as soon as you get to to the point to push the button, it locks your computer? Yeah, yeah maybe. Um, all right, so I've pushed the button, and basically we should see it show up here uh, momentarily. Um, as soon as uh, the, the safe kind of indexing service, the safe transaction service spots it. Uh, I believe my transaction is confirmed already. Uh, MetaMask just gave me a pop-up to say that it had. Uh, but essentially here we've got a, a transaction from a module being uh, kind of triggered from some other interface. Uh, that's affecting change on the safe. So there's our, our, our contract interaction where you push the button. Uh, and so our module triggered the safe to push the button uh, because the safe was the only thing that's allowed to push the button. So huzzah, we made it all the way through. It took a few different attempts, but we got there. Cool. Somewhere something epic just happened. Like I feel it. There's this button that's been pushed, and now all of a sudden the world is different. <laughs> Kia, thank you so very much for everything that you've uh, done during uh, these guild sessions. It's been truly an honor and a privilege to have both you and Oren and the rest of the Gnosis Guild team behind the scenes putting this together for us. Um, I think that the future of DAO interoperability and various different kinds of tools that will enable new, valuable, and creative kinds of collaboration is really bright. And it's really bright largely because of your work. Um, so this is not really even just a thank you from Colonel, but I think just a vote of appreciation from kind of across the ecosystem for what you all are doing. And for the hope that it instills for open, collaborative, non-coercive, and just kind of fun ways of mapping the shared universe together. Um, so we really, we really appreciate it. We love you. We uh, think you all are the best and look greatly forward to coming up with creative uses of Leo, which is my sun sign, by the way. Uh, so I was, I was informed today. I it was yesterday actually. I, I had to do the ascending sign and the moon sign and houses and stuff. So I'm learning. I'm uh, <laughs> you know, slowly kind of figuring my way through some of the deeper, memorable aspects of yeah, it's a astrological <laughs> two sign system. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. But thank you so much, truly. I appreciate it greatly and. It's been it's been a real privilege to have you with us. Yeah, likewise, and thank you for inviting us. And I'm sure um, there'll be many more conversations and other sessions elsewhere to come. Cool. I might just hit the stop recording button. And thank you all, and thank you any future potential viewers. <laughs>